Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at an example illustrating the convolution integral that changes for different intervals. So, given the input x of t equal to 1 for the interval 0 less than t less than t and 0 elsewhere and the impulse response given by h of t equal to t for the interval 0 less than t less than 2t and 0 elsewhere. So, given this input and the impulse response, we want to compute the convolution integral y of t given by x of t convolved with h of t. And since the input and the impulse response are valid or non-zero only for certain intervals, the output also has different values for different intervals. So, the different intervals can be listed as follows or visualized as follows. This is 0, this is t, 2t, 3t and so on. So, this is the interval t less than 0. This is the first interval t less than 0. The second one t between 0 and t, capital T and the third one t between t and 2t. And the next one is t between 2t and 3t. And the final interval is t greater than 3t. So, these are 5 intervals 2, 3, 4 and 5. We have to solve the convolution integral for these 5 different intervals. So, let us look at the first interval 1 that is for t less than 0. So, the first task in computing a or evaluating the convolution integral is to determine the product x of tau multiplied by h of t minus tau. So, first we need to construct these two signals. x of tau is clearly same as x of t, only the axis is tau. So, this is 0 and t. So, this is 1, this is x of tau. h of t minus tau can be constructed as follows. We know that h of tau is basically a ramp between 0 and 2t and this is h of tau. Then h of minus tau is basically a reflection of this original signal which is 0 minus 2t and this is h of minus tau. And next h of t minus tau is basically a shift of this a shifted version of this reversed signal. So, it is t and this is t minus 2t and this axis is tau. So, this is h of t minus tau. By using x of tau and h of t minus tau, we can construct the product x of tau and h of t minus tau. So, for the first interval t less than 0, x of tau into h of t minus tau is equal to 0 because for t less than 0, h of t minus tau will have the following structure. So, this is x of tau zero to t and for h of t minus tau for t less than zero the t and this is t minus two t and t is since t is le always less than zero that is the overlap is always going to be zero for t less than zero y of t is clearly equal to zero since the overlap x of tau into h of t minus tau is zero. For the second interval zero less than t less than t x of tau is the same 0 to t tau. However, h of t minus tau will look something like this. That is, this is the t, and this is t minus 2t and the value of t varies between 0 and t. So, the response h of t minus tau varies from this line to this line. So, x of tau into h of t minus tau is equal to t minus tau for the interval 0 less than tau less than t because because the overlap region can be only from 0 to t that is this region. So, the integral limits are from 0 to t. So, y of t is equal to the integral 0 to 0 to t t minus tau d tau. This is equal to t into tau minus tau square over 2 and the limits are 0 to t.
and this is equal to t into t minus t square over 2 which is equal to t square by 2. Therefore, y of t is equal to t square by 2 for the interval 0 less than t less than t. Now, let us look at the third interval that is that is the time t lies between t capital T and 2t. In this case, x of tau is again the same, 0 to t and its value is 1 and this is x of tau. And then the shifted and reflected impulse response h of t minus tau is has the following structure that is this is t, this is 2t and this is 0. So, h of t minus tau varies from here to it is from here to here. So, the overlap interval is from 0 to t that is that is the entire length of x of tau for non-zero x of tau. So, the product x of tau into h of t minus tau is equal to t minus tau for the interval 0 less than t less than capital T. That is the overlap interval is actually equal to this non-zero part of the signal x of tau. Therefore, the integral y of t is equal to the limits are 0 to capital T x of tau into h of t minus tau which is t minus tau d tau and the integral is t into tau minus tau square over 2 and the limits are 0 to t. By simply using the value t for tau we have we have t into capital T minus capital T squared by 2. Therefore, y of t is equal to small t that is time into the interval and t minus t square over 2 for the interval t less than the time t less than the interval twice the interval 2t. The next interval is the time lies between 2t time t is between 2t and 3t. So, for this interval x of tau is again the same 0 to t tau and this is 1 and here h of t minus tau has the following structure that is its starting point 2t is beyond 2t that is can be somewhere from here So, this is 3t. So, the overlap region has a variable structure that is the starting point is always going to be t minus 2t and the end point is always going to be t. So, this is the overlap. Region. So, x of tau multiplied by h of t minus tau is equal to t minus tau for the values of time between t minus 2t and the interval in t. Therefore, the output y of t is equal to integral with the limits from t minus 2t to capital T or t minus tau d tau and the value is t into tau minus tau square over 2 and with the interval limits from t minus 2t to capital T. Upon using the limits and simple algebraic manipulations, we can easily show that this is equal to t into capital T minus t square over 2 plus 3 by 2 t square where capital T is the interval length. And the final interval for values of t greater than 3t that is the final interval again x of tau is the same the value is 1 however h of t minus tau will start from 3t that is its starting point is outside 3t therefore its ending point will be beyond t this is t and this is 2t so the starting point is beyond 3t and the ending point is beyond t. Therefore, there is no overlap. This 4t. So, I mean there is no overlap between x of tau and h of t minus tau for this interval. Therefore, x of tau into h of t minus tau is equal to 0 for the interval t greater than 3t. Therefore, y of t is equal to 0. Now, by gathering all the results, y of t is equal to 0 for the interval t less than 0 and t square over 2 for the interval 0 less than t less than t and t into t minus capital T by 2 for the values of t in between t and 2t and the output is equal to t into capital T minus t square by 2 
plus 3 by 2 capital T square for the interval 2t less than t less than 3t and 0 for t greater than 3t. So, this is the final output. We can clearly see that the output changes for different intervals. So, to summarize, in this video, we learned how to evaluate the convolution integral that changes for different intervals. Key point is to determine the integration limits for each interval. Thanks for watching.